Number four, this comes down now to everything we've been talking about. Identify what areas you need to work on. So you should refine and practice your client consultations and your conversations. So what areas do you need to work on? Is it prospecting? Is it presenting skills? Is it converting leads? Is having those conversations so you can get somebody to get off the fence to buy or sell? Is it covering objections that you're getting? Is it your negotiating skills or closing the sale? Identify, give yourself a rating in those areas and then go get some training on it. Go practice, go back and and look at your company. You can come and reach out to us. We have a lot of content in our training on that. We're going to be doing a lot of content on this uh, in the coming year as uh, that's very specific to the market in some of those areas. So why homeowners aren't selling? We've talked about it. If they don't need to sell, they're really thinking about it. That's why we don't have as much inventory. And it's generally because they have great interest rate. So you have to find sellers that need to sell. And I mentioned it, divorce and probate are two examples, right? Job transfers, people moving out of state. And one to add to this would be sellers who really are seeing and maybe through a conversation with you that it would be smart to get the equity out of their home now if you actually believe and they believe that prices are going to continue to descend um, down from the highs of whatever they were for your area. And they want to go be the buyer and negotiate a good deal. And you're, they're going to get a, you know, maybe get the two one buy down and the interest rates are a little lower than they were even a month or so ago. They're, they're at 6.39 today. That app. Matt actually updated that for me first thing this morning on, as I record this, right. And I'm going to go into mortgage news daily right now. And the answer is 6.29. There we go. Actually went down a little bit, right? I think it was 6.39 we had in there yesterday, right? They went down a 10th of a point. Okay. So 6.29 as of today. And by the way, Mortgage News Daily uses a, why it's called daily. They use a daily survey of lenders around the country to get what is that rate, the rates for FHA, VA and all that compared to like Freddie Mac, which a lot of the news outlets will report the interest, the current interest rate is X and they're using Freddie Mac. Here's the problem with that, guys. That is a week old data. Freddie Mac does a weekly survey of lenders. And when when you see a news report about the interest rates being X, that's a week ago. Oh my God, we've already had five adjustments or 10 adjustments since then because of the volatility of the market. Okay, that's why you you really need to stay on top of it with that. All right. So other things with sellers. If you were selling last year, uh, you know, I never got away from this because I think you always have to present professionally that you know what you're doing when it comes to listing properties. You know how to handle it in any market. And I believe you must have professional marketing materials Our enti- and a marketing commitment. How many people were not, not, not all of you guys listening to me, but all of our peers out there, how many people were not, were taking crappy photos? How many people still take crappy photos? Holy crap. I mean, I, it is my major pet peeve. I, I can't even believe how a seller, even if it's your friend, would allow somebody to list their house for sale and use their phone in this vertical format to, to put the photos in the MLS. It's just horrible. And guess what? There's going to be more expired listings. So we should put that back over here right now at expired. Find sellers that need to sell work expires and take advantage of the people who did a horrible job the first time, or they did a great job, but the seller wasn't ready to listen to them. Now they're going to be ready to listen to them. And Christine can swoop in and go, Matt was awesome. Uh, How, you know, you don't, you never throw anybody underneath the bus. You just simply say, this is what I do. And here's the things that I do. And let's get your house for sale. And you're, you're going to tell them to put the house where Matt told them to put the house price wise, and it's going to sell. So expires is powerful, but I believe in the three P's preparation, pricing, and promotion. Everything we do is around that. uh, And everything that we do is, and I like a pre-listing presentation. I believe that you don't have to go out and do this big, huge presentation. Just show in your actions in the way that you interact with people that you know what you're doing and that they can know, like, and trust you. Even if they don't know you already, just in the first interaction, they'll start to feel that way. When you listen, you present, you speak to their needs, okay? So let me help you with a couple ideas around pricing. This is what's helping us. Use the history tab. Use the history tab in your CMAs. You all have this in your multiple listing service. 
go to the history tab. You do this with buyers also. So when you're writing an offer, uh, you can see where they've come down in price. But here's a real example from a little bit ago. This property started uh, June uh, 999. Okay. And this is about the time the market was shifting, right? So here's an example of a seller who had to go through a real process of getting real to their price. So they went down, down. Oh, wait a minute. We went up here. I don't know what that was about. Then we went down, down, down. And finally, when they got to 935, two months later, 60 something days later, they got an offer. This is the anecdotal material. It's not even anecdotal. You're the anecdotal. You're, you can use real examples, but you want to use real stats when you're sitting down with the seller to go, let me show you the competition and where they were and where they are now. And let me show you, not six months ago, sales guys, what happened last month? Pull up the pending and show the price reductions that have been there. I guarantee you it'll be there. It's going to help you immensely with pricing your properties to sell. So we always go out and say, we got a price right to sell the house. Now you're able to go, I don't want you to go through this process of wait, being on the market for 90 days until we get into the right price point. By the same token, you don't want to be so under the market that you leave some money on the table because the scary part about that right now, you could get away with that a while ago to create a bidding war. But now what happens is buyers are going to still come in lower than what your price is. So price it right because of what's happened in the last 30 to 60 days, not six months ago. All right. And home, homes that are priced well and that are renovated, that are updated, if they're older, if they look good, they're going to move. Those can be priced a little bit higher on the on the scale. We all agree there's a scale, right? There's always a, a low and a high range. And then depending on location, the condition of your, your uh, seller's home, that's where you're going to help them price it. People don't want to renovate. So that's why they're like, I'm going to $50,000 off, man. I'm not paying that price. I don't care that you've already come down $50,000. And but they will and they'll compete in the the home is turnkey. Okay. And people that have turnkey, their 1990s home in Summerlin that they purchased, you know, 25 years ago still has the original cabinets and small tiles. You guys know what I'm talking about. That is not going to get top dollar right now. It got top dollar six months ago or a year ago, but not now. All right. So that is the reality. They're going to come in, prep your sellers for the inevitability of if they have renovations that need to happen. I'm, I'm the property can look beautiful, but if it's got 20 year old stuff in it, people are going to come in and offer lower and ask for concessions. That's just what's happening in our market. Okay. So have a price reduction strategy. Again, um, set those expectations. And, and here's just another example of a history uh, listing tab. History tab is going to help you if you really get into this. And then on the buy side, be able to talk about pros and cons of buying now versus later. I've talked a little bit about that. Rent versus buy. You know, in re reality, we track the rental market here in Las Vegas, and we're it, it's mirroring just like it did in the uh, appreciation, the crazy appreciation market we had. It's mirroring the resale market, meaning our median uh, rental price here for you know a, a home, a single family home, was about twenty one hundred dollars at the peak. It's around nineteen hundred now. So. There's a lot of rentals on the market and they are, uh, you know, we're, we're in a market right now too, where if the rate, when the rates were at 7%, it was really hard to help somebody see that their payment, their payment was more in many, many markets. You can say your rental payment is higher, if not equal to what your payment is. However, that's where you use things like this chart where you can help people see there's multiple, you can Google this and find a million different variations of the buying power of an interest rate. So if somebody says, I want my payment to be 2,500, well, if we, if we get a 5% interest rate, then their loan can be 466, but at seven, it drops it down $80,000. So having a chart when you're sitting down with a buyer to help them understand it is helping them also see that we can negotiate and maybe get that buy down for you or to get a permanent buy down or get the seller to pay your interest rate down and to be comfortable with a half a point less knowing you could refi if it gets down below five again, right? So it's those kind of conversations, crunching numbers with people that you have to get comfortable with right now when you're in those to get people off the fence. I think half the people or on the fence because they watch some news thing that, that tells them something that's not even correct and they don't think they can qualify. They can if they sit down with you and you help them see it. And if you remember what I said 
uh, about if we all wait, if everybody waits until the rates are back down here, then there's going to be competition again. So, you know, what's important to you? Get to the person's goals. Are you wanting to see when people tell me, well, I want the interest rate to be lower and all that. I'm like, look, here's the deal. Are you buying this house to turn around and, and sell it in a month or two? You know, or if they're worried about the prices coming down, or are you buying it to live in it and get the benefits of home ownership versus paying uh, your landlord's, you know, mortgage payment? You know, what are your goals? Is You know, what is it? And then you can, when you're clear about what that is and you can have a better conversation. <music>